See you later, coach. You're right. These kids aren't that bad. Welcome. Thank you very much. Ready? Quit, are you? Is practice over? Who are you anyway? Dalton Bryant Reynolds. But everyone just calls me DB. I'm the team trainer. They don't need a trainer. They need a keeper. Hi, Mr. Archer. <laughs> How'd your practice go? Fine, thanks. Oh, good. Here, I have your roll sheet. Oh, thank you. In fact, you hang on a second. I'll, I'll show you who the screw-ups are. What, and uh, spoil the surprise? I hope so. <laughs> Say, Spooner, have you ever uh, taken over in the middle of a term before? Um, no. Well, I want to give you some advice. The first time somebody gives you any trouble, bang, you send them down to me right away. You let them know you mean business right from the start. Well, thanks for the advice. Now, listen. Let's face it. It's us against them. We work together, we win. I'm not against anybody. Cheer up, Roland. By the end of the week, you'll be just as disillusioned as you are. When I was in the 11th grade, um, our English teacher Went away for a while, have a baby or something. And they gave us a, a substitute teacher who must have been 80 years old. <laughs> and uh, we decided to drive her crazy by swapping names. <laughs> yeah. So each day for a week, we each took on a different name. I'm sure we were responsible for that poor old woman's nervous condition. <laughs> and her eventual demise soon thereafter. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I am not a substitute teacher. My name is Spooner, Mr. Spooner to you. And I am Mrs. Fletcher's permanent replacement. And this is English, which as far as I'm concerned, means writing grammatically, reading discriminately. I'm sure Mrs. Fletcher conducted her class in much the same manner. That was the problem, Mr. Spooner. She was always trying to teach us algebra. <laughs> And you are? O'Connor. Shane O'Connor? You got it. Yeah, well, Mr. O'Connor, uh, I'm Mrs. Fletcher's permanent replacement. My name is Mr. Spooner, and this is English, and this is the second time your classmates have had to hear this speech, which is why being on time is a real good idea because I'm not all that fascinating the first time around. So, Mr. O'Connor, and this goes for all of you, if you decide to come to this class, and this is entirely up to you, you see, I'd appreciate it if you come on time. <laughs> Who's this joker, anyway? Work on your algebra. Mr. O'Connor, can I see you outside for a second? You know, you and I have a lot in common. <laughs> you don't like school, and I don't like teaching enough to take a lot of crap from a guy like you. So? So no hard feelings. Why don't you just take off? Go on, get out of here. OK. Hey, you got to give me a hall pass. No, I don't. Bishop will bust me if I don't have one. He's been having to get me since I got here. Well, don't get caught. Go hang on to John for an hour. He checks in there. Well, you're a smart guy. You ought to be able to figure something out. Give me a break, will you? I didn't do nothing to you. I want to go back in, all right? I'll make you a deal. 
I'll let you back in if you just sit there. Just sit. You don't have to learn anything. You don't even have to listen. Just sit there quietly and show up on time. That's it. That's it. Just think of my class as a bathroom Bishop doesn't check. <laughs> Well, congratulations. And you got off to a flying start with Bishop today. I wasn't listening in. I was just standing there. I'm Gail Archer. I'm the full-time guidance counselor and the fourth and fifth period art teacher. Harry Spooner. Nice to meet you. You just moved to Meadsboro? Uh-huh. Where from? Out of state. Could you be any less specific? Montana. Oh. Well, sorry to disturb your lunch. It's okay. Hello, Mr. Settles. Oh, howdy, Jim. You got your room all straightened out and cozy yet? Ah, uh, the name is Harry. You sure? I could have sworn you was Jim. It's real tough, you know, with people moving in, moving out. Yeah. That room of yours has had a lot of borders. We had a lawyer once, insurance man. There was a fella who writes books. Mm -hmm. He kept sneaking women up the back way. <laughs> I should have thrown him out, but it was too darn interesting. Yeah, well, I gotta go. I've got some papers to grade. Now, you don't have to hide anything from me, Jim. Harry. Yeah. Harry, Harry, if, if, if you want a woman over, you bring her right up the front. Okay, I'll remember that. Thanks. Hey, what's all this? Thanks for the lift, Dad. I'll see you later. Hey, Mr. Spooner? M Mr. Spooner? Uh, the, the guys and I were kind of wondering if, if you were going to be there tomorrow. Be where? Uh, wrestling practice. Well, sure I'm going to be there. I'm the coach. Yeah. Um, some of the guys were wondering... Actually, I kind of wondered from the way you walked out this morning, if maybe... Uh, listen, I'm sorry, but I met a couple hundred people today. Who are you? D.B. Reynolds. The team trainer. Yeah. What's DB stand for? Oh, Dalton Bryant, after my mom's dad. Of course, everyone just calls me DB. <laughs> everyone except Shane O'Connor. And what catchy names he come up with? Dirtbag. <laughs> He's a real genius, isn't he? Yeah. At least he got the initials right. <laughs> so, you're gonna be at practice tomorrow? Yeah, you'd be there too. I could use your help. Okay. Um, Bye. <laughs> Wrestling begins with a takedown. Can I have a volunteer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can be pretty embarrassing because this is the one high school sport where everybody on the team is the quarterback. You're out there all alone and everybody's watching you. Your parents are watching, your friends are watching, that cute little girl in math class is watching, <laughs> which means you can be a hero or you can make a complete fool out of yourself. It's all up to you. Either way, you get the credit or you get the blame. Now, that makes my job pretty easy, you see, because it's all up to you. And the harder you work in practice, the better you're going to look out there. The more corners you cut, the more likely it is you're going to land flat on your back. Now, I can teach every one of you the skills it takes to be a winner. But you have to remember one thing. You are not out there for me. You're not out there for the school. You're not out there for your friends 
or your parents. You're out there for that cute little girl in math class. <laughs> I uh, enjoy the walk, thanks. Um, actually, I was hoping to ask you a question. It's really more of a favor. Um, I'm also the advisor for the student paper, and we like to do articles on new teachers when I come to Meadsboro. Well, it's no big deal. You just have to spend a few minutes with a student reporter, you know. Where are you from? Favorite music? Favorite ice cream? Heavy metal. <laughs> You're kidding. It's the flavor of the month. <laughs> come on, I'm serious. Did we get the interview? Uh, if you don't mind, uh, I'd rather not. Well, I no, I don't mind, but the kids are going to be disappointed. You've made quite an impression here. Look, uh, why don't you do a story on the wrestling team? A wrestling story, huh? Sure, why not? You're a strange one, Harry Spooner. Born December 17, 1947, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. No juvenile record. Numerous aliases. Attended Ridgemont College in 1967. On, get this, a wrestling scholarship. Kicked out of school in 1970 for forging checks. Actually, he has quite a resume. He's been a commercial artist, a high school art teacher, and a house painter. That makes sense. He was an art major in college. He only minored in forgery. Well, it's a pattern. Keep going. He's been uh, a cop, a security consultant, even a lawyer once. There's another pattern. You got a bad guy who likes being a good guy. You're right. This guy doesn't follow patterns. He invents them just to throw you off the trail. Now you're beginning to understand Mr. Michael Norlin. Well, maybe we'll get lucky. I mean, he's bound to start forging checks sooner or later. And he may be forging. But he won't cash him until he's got to make a quick getaway. What's this all about? Hey! Leave on this jacket, you're in big trouble. Now, somebody talk to me. You don't want to talk to me? Let's go talk to Dean Bishop. Let's go. Mr. Spooner, please don't take him to the office. Stay if out of this. If you do, Bishop will kick him out of school. His parents will throw him out of Shut up! Please! Yeah, thanks a lot. I want you to do your fighting off school property. Now, get out of here. Go on. Hey, what's the matter with you, anyway? You know, I've had about enough of you. Well, why don't you just take me to Bishop's office, and I don't care. I'm not real good at turning people in. Hey, maybe I ought to call your parents. No, man, don't do that. Look, I've only been here six months. Bishop's already called my parents.